Okay, it's time to introduce you all. And I would normally do this on a second channel video, but Arcane, please go watch Arcane. Um, it's on Netflix for fuck's sake. I like to, I usually make this video like sort of like this on the um, secondary channel, but this might become a very big part of the main channel here. And so I wanted to introduce you to her. Her name is Raiden, RD6012. And this, while not being a linear power supply, is a power supply, like a bench power supply, like a crazy nice one. My friend Dan, the IT man, if you're a watcher of uh, my live streams, you'll know Dan, because he shows up all the time, was like, dude, this is on sale, get one. And I tend to listen, and I just did. So it was $170 for the full kit. You had to assemble it a bit. There's a big power supply in here that you wire up, and you have to screw into the terminals, and you have to put the thing on the back for the 110. And then the module and the faceplate here is what does all the magic. Um, the reason I bought this is because of this. I haven't reviewed it yet fully. This is the Fossey V3. You probably saw this in the Meet the Creators video having to do with the Mod House tungstens. Ignore the sides, I broke the wood. I did bad. <sighs> That's my bad. I squeezy, squeezy too hard. Anyway, this is a speaker amp that claims um, 300 watts times two. The thing is, here's the power brick that comes with this Fossey, and it's 32 volts, five amps. And according to Fossey, who are selling this directly, you can get it with the upgraded power supply that's 48 volt, 10 amps, to get the full 600 watts out of the whole thing, which actually it only calculates up to about 500 watts, but whatever. The point is, we were trying it on the tungsten and Ryan from Monhouse was like, I should really order one of these because it sounds so good powering the headphones with the adapter on it, which I'll get a, I'll make a better adapter than that, um, that I really want to try with the higher end version. And even though Fossey sent this to me, I could probably message them and be like, hey, can you send me the bigger power supply? Whatever that would cost, 40, 50 bucks, why not just invest in one of these, build a cable, which can you tell I destroyed a mica cable for this? And this way I'll have a power supply. This will handle 60 volts at up to 12 amps. So that should cover most um, DC powered things that are in my collection and things that will show up. So this runs off 32.5 or 48.10, easily can handle that. Um, I'm gonna put this back down there. I brought out the original Giselle Labs Erish uh, balance because this is one of the things that also worked really well with the tungsten. And then I had this, the 604, my baby. Like here's the thing. I think I recently sold my extra one of these in the yard sale, and do I fucking regret it? Because this powers the tungsten, powers all the SJY planars, including the version one Starry Night, the hard to drive one, um, really well. And here's the thing, I can tweak, this is supposed to have a 12 volt, two amp. So now I can actually monitor what this will actually show you. And uh, hold on. All right, I can actually monitor. This is the voltage that it's currently feeding the amplifier. Here's the amps that the amp is currently drawing. And that's the total watts because it's just doing the math for it. So with nothing playing, that's pause. This just sitting there, keeping the tubes warm, it's drawing eight watts and 0.64 amps. So if I and I'm using these right now, which is the first time I have them up here. I'm sourcing with my phone through another Fossey DS1 just to give it actual sauce through a DD Hi-Fi cable. I'll link all this stuff. This has a balanced in, and here's a balanced out, or that's a balanced out. Individual gain knobs. Remember my review of this. I don't want to put this back in my head with uh, it in narrow. But if you remember my review of this, it was way too powerful. And I told you, you literally, it's almost impossible to like, tweak the volume up to such a small level for easy to drive headphones. But none of the headphones up here are easy to drive. These are all monsters. So feeding it slightly more, more voltage, like I don't know when this will blow up. The problem with this thing is I could easily just hit a button and then tell it to go over and then be like, hey, instead of 12.5 volt, make it 12.6, 0.7, 0.8. 0.9. I've run it up to 13 volts so far. Um, but I could overdrive. This is basically I can overclock the audio equipment I've got to the point of failure. And I feel like this is going to be, do you remember the Ferrum or, well, there was the two things. There was a Ferrum stack. 
the whole point of the ferrum stack or what made the ferrum stack unique is it had a power supply that could modify the voltage and amperage allowances and then it would tune the amplifier above it so essentially what i'm doing with this for 170 dollars is i'm taking what the ferrum ore did or at least the the hypsos i think it was the hypsos was the actual thing and i'm just making it cheaper and it's a little less complicated than that but i have very fine control i could even hold on i gotta get out of this i could even bring up like a graph and then scale the graph in to see you know the power fluctuations as i'm using it and it's fan it's fascinating hold on i will go back to why anyway it's fascinating to see the difference that would this will tell me about the power that's required because this isn't just like make it this make it this and it's done i have a full display of what is actually being taken by the amplifier by the Fosse, by the Shelly Labs, by the X-Duo. And I can see visibly that certainly the Starry Night version ones, these were like at the standard stock power that this thing is supposed to have, 12 volt, two amps. If you set it to that, it'll, sh it'll only accept giving it two amps. When I had to put those up, it was clipping. You could see it was trying to draw more than two. And then I allowed it to draw more than two and it stopped clipping. And then I allowed it to draw more than four and it just kept going. And the problem is the amplifier kept taking it and that kept wanting more. So I can actually see how hard those were to drive. The tungstens on the other hand are very voltage dependent. These run at about one quarter the amount of amperage required than the, the Starry Night V1s. These um, new open back uh, moonlights much more efficient they're they're if i play well honestly if you play the most loud violent things it's better that's one of the the things you also learn when you start playing with things like this is how hard push a t did i see push a t we'll go back to arcane so that's that pretty fucking with those misfit toys yeah when the bass hits, we're drawing 12 watts in this. Sitting still right now, 8.19. When the bass is kicking at a loud volume, 13 volts. 13 watts, I mean. Yeah, I'm seeing flashes of 13 there. In fact, we can go to the graph. It is not, gra it does it not graph while I'm, um, it may not graph while I'm not on the display, but that means it's drawing five extra watts out of the thing to run this to push that. That's how much power these are taking. If I swap over to the tungsten, oh, thank you to Hard Audio Cable for providing those. And by the way, this is a Z-Reviews cable that's gonna be coming out from Triple Win, but not yet. That when the Colab headphone comes out, that's when that's gonna be. Ten. Ten, and I have those loud. Trust me, I know where the volume knobs need to be on this. So these are pulling twice as much power through the power supply to run the 604 to run the headphone than it is for this. Even though these are statistically harder to drive, these require more voltage, which makes them feel like they are harder to drive and less efficient. So I can actually see, like, I was considering upgrading the power supply on some of these. On the Fosse here, if I unplug this, plug it into the Fosse, power that up, wire up the source and everything, the Fosse gives no fucks. You could run this at 48 volt, 0.3 amps, and it'll run any headphone on the planet Earth, including this or this. So when this is gonna really need the big boy power supply, the 4810, is when I get this hooked up to really inefficient speakers. Because that's when you get up to that, like the limits of its power. It, headphones are just like non-existent. So I'm basically saying, if you're buying the Fosse to do headphones, you probably don't need to go higher than the 32 volt five amp it comes with. But this has allowed me to find that out. And I haven't played with all the features, like you gotta hit shift and go into the menu and you could adjust, like there's a, there was a terrible beep. It was such a terrible beep. It was such a terrible beep. Um, it was beep, 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 beep. Every time you beeped, it was like, like a car alarm going off. But this is now, this is where I'd wanna go with the channel. 
I want to do experimental shit. If I can get a company, if I can get Fossey to send me three or four of these, I can test them to explosion. Because the chip in here, according to the actual tech specs, should handle 52 volts, not 48. If the problem is there's other things around the chip that Fossey has installed that may not be able to handle that extra boost. And is that boost even audible? That's another thing that's nice about this. I can literally hit a button and turn the knob physically turn up the voltage. And I could tell you this much, with the tungstens on the 604, which does a remarkable job, by the way, if I turn it from 12 volt to 13 volt slowly, I can hear parts where I think it's clipping shrinking. I can actually hear the added voltage, just like you could on the Faramore and Hypsos. Just like you could, I could hear it just getting out of its way. Now, this isn't exactly like a high-end amplifier, although you could fucking lie to me and tell me it is because it's amazing. Um, but the fact that I can control and sort of twist the, the limit switch with a power supply that costs less than most amplification things, I'm down. I'm down to clown. The only problem you'd have as an audiophile is you probably only have one of these, <clears throat> unless you're really crazy and you have like a stack. And you do require DC gear. Anything that runs on 110 out of the wall, you're not really fucking with that. You could, I get a variac and just drop it down. That probably would blow things up. Um, but yeah, no, I really want to just show this off because I'm probably going to have this mounted on my desk somewhere and I'm going to figure out what, uh, what needs to be toyed with. Because there's a ton. Like the biggest example of that was the Fio R7. You, the, the the standalone with the vertical screen, the, the standalone DAP with all the outputs, and it said, hey, you could use AC or you could plug it in DC. And I used that 11 amp DC 12 volt power supply on it, which I can't find by the way. And it sounded, it legitimately made the headphone amplifier and that sound better. Because the, the built-in transformer was just a cheap little thing to make the Android device run. And by the way, it'll do a headphone. You plug that monster honka chunk in the back of it, and it worked fucking great. So now I could pop the Fio on top of this, feed the Fio 12 volts. I probably wouldn't modify the voltage too much since that's such a smart device. This is sort of like a big dumb tube amp. This is certainly a big dump amp, big dumb amps. These don't have any digital circuitry in them at all, essentially. They're just, there are circuits, but they're not like controlling CPUs. I would probably leave the voltage the same on the R7, but just give it 12 amps. Here's all the amps. Use all the amps you want. And then I could monitor it, how much it's drawing. So I think this is going to be, once I put the waifu sticker on it, it's basically been adopted. I love this thing already. And it actually is designed, I should probably show the unit off because I mean, I've, congratulations, we're at a review of a Raiden RD 6012. So power buttons here. This is the on off for the actual outputs. So now that's off. Turn that back on. If you turn this off, it's soft offs. There's a full transformer in here, like a big son of a bitch. It's basically the entire inside you mount it. And you'll see this little pulse because it's not actually off until you turn it off with the switch in the back. When you do that, the transformer will run out, the capacitors will run out, and this will just be off. If you leave it on, this will flash. There's goop on there. Turn that on, it loads the BIOS of the Raiden DC power supply. You get in here and then you can always remember before you hit this button to check. Our input currently is 65 volts from the MIG transformer in here. Um, our voltage set is 12.6, which is a little higher than normal, and three amps, which is doesn't matter. It's never drawing more than like one. And then you have over voltage protection and over thing protection set to 62 and 12 and it'll handle up to 70 volts, actually, the power supply inside, but you're not supposed to run more than 60. And then you have all sorts of memories you could reload, but you just wanna give that an eyeball check and be like, all right, am I gonna blow up the thing? Because I'm swapping this into, di this needs 48, this needs 12, and this needs 12. You don't wanna blow things up. I mean, this is the power supply that comes with the Gishelli Labs. It's a little tiny 12 volt, 2.1 amp. And this is obviously the one that's five amps. So yeah, it's, it's a basic unit. But I mean, I love the fact that I could just literally hit the set and then you could slide it over because now it's the hundredth, the tenth, the one volt, the 10, uh, you can't bring it over to the 10 volt, but I could just turn it 20 volts, six volts. And then you make sure you shut that off and then you hit on, tubes light up, we're rolling. 
So keep an eye out for this. I'm sure I'll mention it verbally and you'll probably see this thing. I'll build another one of these cables that's a little bit longer. In fact, I cut the uh, mica cable, specifically one short end and the other end is like five feet long so I could have this over there and still work. This just clicked. Yeah, now this is, not to keep re-reviewing the tungsten, but if Ryan can't meet the 20 units a month or he can't add more than that, I may not actually review them. I may just mention them. So you know they exist in your head, but you're not like waiting in line for nine months. It's gonna be what the Argon weight was, doubled, and they're gonna be $1,600. These are my favorite headphones in the world. Like these over D8000s. I'd take these over Sasvara. I the, Again, I'm not reviewing them yet. And this is just revision nine of a demo unit that I cracked the thing because it wasn't fully assembled. But um, yeah, no, nothing's gonna beat this. Especially on like, if a simple hybrid tube can run it and I could probably put it back up. I was noticing more clipping on the little power brick. Well, this isn't the power brick for this. The power brick for this is over there. It's a little two amp. Even though I'm not drawing more than currently, even if I blast this, that's maximum volume and I have this down a couple notches. Yeah, 0.72 amps. So obviously this default power supply for this will run it fine. I do have slightly more voltage. Let's drop the voltage down there. Now we're back at 12 even. Um, my friend was like, you might want to just type in and hit enter because you just type in 12 enter instead of like lowering it slowly. So it has a chance to like do, but I'm okay with this. This is an interesting little aspect because no one really talks about overclocking there. I know in, in the world of tube amps, people will get a variac or a light bulb and like slowly bring the voltage up to make sure everything's sort of settled before they whack it with full power. And what you could do with one of these is you could limit the amperage, plug it in, get it warm, get it going, and then, okay, as your need draw, add, and never go beyond that so you don't shock the system with like a massive draw. Because if, if this thing ever required 10 amps, odds are it's gonna take that 10 amps and then start a fire. So it's good that I could limit it. Three, give it one, give it 50% more possible draw. So you know, this is, this is cool as shit. And there's a horse's head that came with the house. It's kind of freaky. Horses are kind of freaky looking. They're out there right now in the darkness. God. For some reason, the shuffle on my foobar is the worst. Yeah, I think every time I tell it to shuffle, it shuffles the exact same order. It's so weird. Like, I don't know what it is with the mobile app. Yeah, it's literally... Oh. All right, I'm done. I, I just turned this on to make a really quick video. If you wanna find more videos like this, check out my second channel, because I don't wanna post this weird shit here on the main channel. I'm still playing around with the scheduling, like I was doing just Friday dumps, but the algorithm fucking hates that. Well, it actually hates the very first video put out. That got about a third of the views that normal, a normal video would get. Um, but it loved the second video, and it was like, eh, with the third. So. I may do two dumps on Friday, like a double Friday, and then do two more throughout the week, maybe Monday, when, Monday, Wednesday, and then double on Friday, just so I can get the full four videos out. We'll see, I'm still playing with the algorithm, although it's not playing nice back. So, link to this, link to, well, not these yet, unless it's the future that I go back in time and add the link. I think I can link the Fossil, this seems to be an, an Indiegogo, like it seems to still be like, not fully available. And the thing is fucking amazing for headphones, so I can't wait to hear it on speakers. And then this, the Moonlights are out and the Starry Night 2s are out. So yeah, and I think this Fosse's out. And for fuck's sake, if you have a 604, treasure it. Treasure it. I had this on my desk up here for, for the specifically the Shore 1540s and uh, then I decided, yeah, what the fuck, I'll plug the goddamn tungsten into it. They're not easy to drive at all. And it was perfect. Oh, I'm done, you're done. There's a pizza cutter over there. Because of course Zeos has one just sitting on his kitchen counter. That's, I, that's fine. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to listening to music.
Oof. We'll take that down a couple notches. And I'll talk to you all in a couple days, and hopefully maybe we'll see some more cool shit. What else do you want to see? My friend Dan actually said he can actually measure things, too. Like with THD, like he has a full you know, oscilloscope rig to do that.